This is part two of our chapter five video lecture series that deals with medical and dental, any type of health related expense that we can claim as an itemized deduction on our tax return. This is IRS publication 502 that has more detail and current information than our textbook. Remember now we're dealing with not the standard deduction that we've been using in past chapters, but we're now dealing with itemized deductions that are first reported on a Schedule A and then rewritten here, the total itemized deductions in line 9 of the 1040 form. So on Schedule A, there's different sets of itemized deductions, and the first set is that medical and dental. And it's a relatively just four lines that's short, but there's a lot of detail to get to the amounts that are entered into these lines. Here it mentions that you cannot include any expenses that have been reimbursed, typically by health insurance companies, or maybe paid by others like the employer as a fringe benefit for the employee or maybe some type of legal settlement that pays for the medical costs. Those types of costs cannot be put here in line one. Typically we say it's just the out-of-pocket costs that you can put here in line one. And for most taxpayers, at least when they're healthy, the total health and um, medical dental expenses are relatively low total for the whole year in line one. But that's not going to be your health and dental expense deduction, you have to reduce it down by a percentage of the taxpayer's adjusted gross income. We know that's a specific line reported on the 1040 form. And we're going to take 7.5% of the AGI number. Our textbook is pretty uh, not up to date. It says 10%, which is an old limitation that was repealed. It's better now with a lower percentage, yeah, not 10%. Use the 7.5%, yeah, whenever you see 10% mentioned in our chapter 5. So we take the AGI and multiply it by 7.5%, and that's the amount we got to reduce the uh, qualifying expenses in line one to get the amount of medical, dental, health related expenses that we can deduct. Keeping in mind, this is just one amount in the total at the bottom of Schedule A that has to be larger than the standard deduction. Again, here's that total at the bottom that has to be larger than the standard deduction for it to be. Um, an option to deduct. So again, because most people have relatively low medical expenses each year and moderate AGI, most taxpayers end up with zero as the amount deductible here in line four. Typically, if you have some major medical costs like a hospitalization or maybe dental braces or hearing aids, all of that may be combined in a one year. The cost can be relatively high here. And then maybe you're relatively low AGI to eventually get something here in line for that can be deductible. Now, who can you deduct these costs for medical costs? If you take a look back on the 1040 form, we're talking about costs for the taxpayer or the spouse or dependents of the taxpayer. We saw back in chapter two, there may be certain tests to be able to be claimed as a qualifying child or other qualifying relative. And in the case of um, uh, qualifying relatives, there was a income test the dependent had to be below a certain level. That was uh, uh, $4,200 per year if the other qualifying relative has income larger than that, you cannot list them down as a dependent. But if that's the only thing that's preventing the taxpayer to claim that person as a dependent, any medical cost paid for that um, non-qualifying person, non-qualifying dependent, now can be claimed here in uh, line one for qualifying medical costs. So what type of cost now can we claim? Of course, we can claim stuff like doctor bills, 
dentist bills. The big one would be hospital costs. Uh, how about uh, um, braces is a big one, yeah, for dental. Let's see, things like supplies, assuming it's prescribed, yeah, by the doctor. Now, if it's stuff like vitamins, um, uh, aspirin, which can be bought over the counter, off the shelf, those don't qualify. It's only drugs, only items prescribed by the doctor that you can claim in that line one. Um, possibly one of the bigger expenses that reoccur regularly is the cost of health insurance. Again, we call that the premium. Now, if the premium is paid by your employer, if the premium is a tax-free benefit like Medicaid, then you cannot deduct it here, yeah? Also, if the premium is deducted from your paycheck and it reduces your taxable salary or wage, you cannot deduct that premium cost. Okay. Now, if the insurance is paid, let's say, through your Social Security benefits, like uh, the Medicare Part B premium, that can be put here as qualifying costs. If the health insurance, like the Medicare Part A, is taken out of your paycheck, that's not deductible because that's treated as really a, a tax and not insurance premium. How about if your doctor says, oh, you need to get more exercise? How about that gym cost? Or any general um, health benefits like exercise, dance classes, uh, yoga classes, are not qualifying costs yeah, for general health benefits. But how about if it's for physical therapy? Again, if it's prescribed, you probably can deduct that. How about um, swimming? You know, I need to get my arms more mobile. Maybe how about a swimming pool? A jacuzzi. If it's prescribed by a doctor, it only can be deductible if it doesn't increase the value of your home. And for most people, they probably will not qualify. Stuff like ramps or physical um, barriers, yeah, um, uh, remodeling to because persons are immobile due to some type of physical disability, those possibly can be deducted. How about travel? You cannot get any treatment here locally in Hawaii. So maybe your doctor prescribes you to go to see a specialist on the mainland. Well, if that's the case, the airfare is deductible. If you need help, one person can accompany you and their travel is also covered. There's a $50 lodging limit per person when you are on medical travel. Even driving from your home to a doctor's office, you can deduct up to, I think it's 20 cents per mile on medical travel. Let's see, any other costs we need to take care of here? I think that's it. So again, we're looking at this uh, form Schedule A. The qualifying medical costs here in line one reduced by any non-taxable benefit, minusing 7.5% of AGI in line three to get what's deductible in line four. And again, for most people, even if they itemize, it's still going to end up with zero because of this reduction, AGI reduction. Okay, take a look at the next video where we talk about deducting taxes we paid during the year.